We'll start by looking at what the textbooks say. We'll refer to this as the Schur hypothesis because it was made prominent by a chronology published in the 1890s by N.L. Schur for a variety of reasons, some of them political. Schur's arguments caught on, and people have concluded since that time that the 4 BC eclipse is the eclipse that we're looking for, that Herod dies very shortly after this eclipse and just prior to Passover in 4 BC, which took place on the 11th of April in that year. Here's how the Schur argument works. It assumes possibility A. Herod is appointed by Rome in 40 BC, not 39, that's a mistake, and he conquers Jerusalem in 37 BC, not 36, that's a mistake. Then, Schur assumes that Josephus is reckoning Herod's reign using inclusive counting. What is that? Well, at a high level, inclusive counting says the first 12 months are year one. Then as soon as you hit 12 months, you're now in year two. 12 to 24 months are year two. As soon as you hit 24 months, okay, you've reigned for two years, but you're now in year three. You've got to add one more layer on top of that, though. Kings and rulers rarely die on the last day of the calendar year. So on the inclusive counting method, you're in office for some fraction of a year prior to New Year's, that's your first year. And so on New Year's, whether you've been reigning for one day or 364 days, you are now in year two. So that is on our calendar today. If you were to take office on December 30th of this year, on January 1st of next year, you'd be in year two already. Sure assumes inclusive counting. Now we do have historical precedent for inclusive counting. We also have historical precedent for what is known as the accession year method. This says we're not going to count the few days, weeks, or months of your partial year. That's your accession year. Year one starts on New Year's. The first New Year's you are in office, that begins year one. This is helpful because it ensures that you won't have a single year being reckoned under the names of two different rulers. That is, if you're in office in October, November, December, that year is going to be considered the last year of the previous guy's reign. Your reckoning will start on New Year's of the following year. Both of these methods were used historically. Both of these methods were used by rulers over the Jews, and both of them are plausible interpretations of Josephus. Sometimes Josephus counts inclusively, and sometimes he does not. This is one of the great difficulties in interpreting Josephus, is, okay, he gave us the numbers, but how was he counting? Schur assumed inclusive counting. It was the only way to get 4 BC to work. Consider, if 40 BC is year one, then 39 BC is year two, 38 BC is year three, and so on, 4 BC would be year 37. Thus, Schur also assumed that when Josephus says that Herod had reigned 37 years, what he meant is Herod was in the 37th year of his reign. Although that is not the most straightforward rendering of the passage, it's at least possible. It could be that Josephus meant to tell us Herod had reigned 37 years and he was in his 38th, but it could be taken to mean he was in his 37th year. Sure, again, opted for he was in his 37th year because that was the only way to make the math to work. So, Sure's assumptions. Herod is appointed by Rome in 40 BC. He conquers Jerusalem in 37 BC. His reign is being counted inclusively. He is in his 37th year in 4 BC. This is the eclipse that we're looking for. Herod dies in 4 BC. Sure didn't know about all five of these eclipses. He didn't have the benefit of NASA, but he did know about this eclipse and he was able to make the data work with this one. The icing on the cake for the Sure argument and the piece of evidence that is most commonly cited by its supporters today is that we have evidence that Herod's sons, or at least two of them, reckoned their reigns from 4 BC. This is pretty straightforward, right? If they're reckoning their reigns from 4 BC, that must be when their father, Herod the Great, died. Now, how do we know that Herod's sons reckoned their reigns from this time? We know it at least two ways. Number one is coins from Herod Antipas. Antipas, one of Herod's sons, was deposed by Emperor Caligula in AD 39. The latest dated coins from Antipas's reign say year 43 working backwards, there's no year zero, that would mean that Antipas was reckoning his reign from 4 BC, or some would argue 5 BC. Additionally, Herod's son Archelaus was deposed by Augustus in AD 6. We know it's AD 6, courtesy of Dio Cassius, and Josephus tells us that this was in the 10th year of Archelaus's reign. 
or at least that's what he tells us in one book. In another book, he tells us it was the ninth year of Archelaus's reign. Again, we're seeing this off by one issue show up a lot in Josephus. It may not do his credibility a lot of good, but at least it gets us in the right ballpark. AD 6 is either year 9 or year 10. Generally, year 10 is the date that's preferred. That means his reign is being reckoned from about 4 BC, plus minus a year. Some have also tried to make this argument for Herod's son, Philip. This one's a little more challenging. Philip might be reckoning his reign from 4 BC, but our knowledge of when Philip died comes through manuscript evidence and there is textual corruption. There are two different versions. One says that it was in this year that he died and one says in that year, and so it's difficult to be entirely sure. But at least from Archelaus and Antipas, we have good reason to believe they're dating their reigns from about 4 BC. Thus, the sure hypothesis says, we, we gotta make some assumptions, but we can at least make the math work for the 4 BC eclipse. And Herod's sons, reckoning their reigns from 4 BC, shores that up and says, yeah, you're on the right track. Herod dies in 4 BC. This is the textbook answer. It's what you'll find on a quick Google search, and it has several serious flaws.